Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. The previous lectures we were discussing about producer theory. In this lecture we're going to be discussing about consumer theory. Okay. So as we discussed that the production function or producer theory in general is related to suppliers or an entrepreneur or in business. Let's say you want to you know, start an enterprise so you are providing goods and services. So it is related with the, with the supply, the producer theory. However, on the other hand, the consumer theory is related with the demand. So as you know, in, in economics, uh, we have say demand and supply, two variables, okay? And uh, the whole economic system revolves around demand and supply, whether it is demand for labor or whether it is demand for goods and somebody is providing labor and somebody is providing goods and services. So demand and supply. So economic systems, they are uh, always in the dynamic equilibrium of demand and supply. And it's a very tricky thing that uh, how to measure, how to measure uh, the consumer satisfaction or uh, in, in other form, um, the demand. I mean, if the consumer are satisfied, okay, with certain products and services, they're going to demand it more. Now, it's, it's again becomes challenging that uh, how we can mathematically model it. So, let's, uh, let's see uh, what uh, economics theory says about it. People make choices that make them happy. Now, for, for instance, that if you are hungry, if you have not had breakfast in the morning and uh, you had to go to class, attend the boring lecture, whatnot, and you are very hungry. So think about uh, the utility of for you to attend the class. I mean, it might not be that much because you are too hungry, your whole attention will, will be on your hunger. So at that time, the utility for even a piece of bread would be too much for you because that's going to make you happy. And uh, so you might uh, decide to go to a uh, go to buy bread instead of going to class. So what we can say we is simply that people make choices, okay? And those choices, uh, how do we make? what makes us happy or in general what makes consumer happy uh, so it's a it's a decision making problem and that's where uh, things come in picture for example let's say you're you're too hungry okay so which one would you choose there is uh, uh, there is a banana and there is uh, a basket of strawberries okay so you might think okay I can choose both of these but if you have uh, to only choose between one of these uh, which choice would you make isn't it interesting so that's where uh, the consumer uh, theory or aspects of uh, of how to model the consumer demand comes in picture So essentially, it is uh, it is something to do with the with the the functions which uh, can model uh, the choices which people make, right? So, what tools we do have? Well, there is a concept of utility okay, to measure the preference okay, of the consumers. So, or preference of uh, your choices, whether you're going to uh, give preference to banana or you're going to give preference to strawberries, okay? So, something called utility. Utility is simply the measure of preference. And again, it's very tricky because uh, it, it may be that, uh, that you are not happy with either strawberries or banana. So, the utility essentially 
uh, would be very low for you or maybe zero if you don't uh, really if strawberries or banana really uh, these don't make you happy okay nevertheless uh, let's see what uh, how we can model utility or how we can model the consumer choices uh, okay so let's say uh, some function u x of x y represents utility of consuming x units of coffee and y units of bread okay arbitrary function x uh, u x y and why do we choose u because we are talking about in terms of utility okay so this function let's say utility is some function okay some function of variables x units of coffee and y units of bread okay now you may have uh, choices that okay you may have the option that x1 y1 okay, x1 quantity of coffee and y1 quantity of bread or you can consume x2 quantity of coffee and y2 quantity of uh, bread now which one would you choose how will you make choice so we can we can model y i function let's say some utility of uh, choosing uh, x1 y1 is say u of x1 y1 and say utility of choosing x2 y2 is say u of x2 y2 right now you would choose x1 y1 if the utility of uh, x1 y1 is greater than utility of x2 y2 clear and you may choose the x2 y2 option if the utility of uh, x2 y2 is greater than utility of x1 y1 so we sort of uh, said that okay uh, let's try to understand or let's try to calculate the utility of consuming certain goods and services that's about it clear and there is no natural unit of utility it's, it's something that uh, well how can you measure uh, or how can you put a unit on on your on the thing say for example your brain uh, or you are happy basically of after consuming certain things and your brain gives you satisfaction so how will you how will you put a unit onto it so essentially there is no natural unit as such in literature for utility now let's talk about uh, some functions which uh, are quite important and mostly used in economics there are many utility functions but uh, here in this lecture we're going to be discussing about uh, some basic uh, utility functions first utility function comes uh, to mind is isoelastic utility okay so what does it mean that uh, this function uh, the utility of consuming c is consumption is consumption and eta is some parameter in this equation okay. and this eta is some parameter and that parameter essentially uh, it gives us uh, the measure of risk okay. that uh, if we consume certain quantity uh, what is the risk level or uh, is a parameter which uh, if we, we're going to talk about utility of uh, in this in the terms of uh, modeling the risk uh, say portfolio risk and uh, whatnot then it's uh, it's a risk aversion parameter all right so isoelastic uh, utility let's call it equation one 
And if we try to plot uh, a graph of uh, this utility function, let's see how does it look like. So if you, as you can see here, the, the graph uh, uh, between uh, say consumption and the utility for different values of eta, okay, or different values of uh, uh, measure of risk or risk aversion uh, parameter. All right, now let's talk about another uh, important uh, utility function is exponential utility function. And what does it, what this function is? It's very simple, it's, uh, it's in the form of uh, e exponential, e to the power something, okay? So e to the power some parameter and the consumption, okay? And a is here the parameter which is called a uh, risk aversion parameter, okay? And c is consumption. And if we, uh, let's call it equation number two, and if we try to plot, okay, the consumption and utility graph for exponential utility function, it does look like uh, this. As you can see here, um, for a risk uh, aversion parameter, which is, uh, or risk parameter, a, a equal to zero, means that it's uh, the person uh, has uh, risk neutral level, okay? Or the consumer has risk neutral level if we are talking in terms of uh, risk management, okay? So different values of uh, parameter A, we get a different uh, plot between consumption and utility. So if A is greater than zero, it means that uh, the consumer is risk averse. If A is equal to zero, means consumer is risk neutral. And if A is less than zero, it means consumer is really taking risk or a risk taker, all right? So these are two basic uh, important uh, utility functions. There are other utility functions which uh, can be used uh, in different situations and there are, there is a whole lot of area of research of uh, trying to come up with uh, with a you know uh, with another better utility function depending upon what economic questions somebody is, uh, is studying or finding the answer for right now let's talk about uh, something uh, another important concept how does the income limits choices, okay? What it means simply is that, let's say you have uh, some money to spend and how that limit for money will influence the choices you make. You might make 60,000, your friend might make 100,000. So depending upon the available money to spend, choices will differ. Let's say you have right away 100,000 and you might decide to buy Porsche. And your friend, uh, he may have, uh, you know, less money and he might decide to just buy a Volkswagen, okay? So it depends on the, on the income. Uh, and, and then how the utility and how the preferences, um, they behave. So let's try to understand that, okay? So let's see this, uh, this fancy equation. P x x plus P of y multiplied by y is less than m. So as we see here that capital X and capital Y represents the goods. So P of capital X is simply the price of good, good X. And P of Y is simply the price of good Y and X and small X and small Y are the units or the quantities of uh, good X and Y respectively. And M is the available money to spend, all right? And if we try to plot the graph, okay, simply between uh, X and Y, 
that means the units uh, of uh, good x consumed and units of good y consumed and if we try to plot a graph we see that uh, a, a triangle or, or less is some area under the green line we call it a budget set and a budget set is nothing but uh, what are what is available to us okay and the green line simply represents the budget line Now we can define the budget line as the boundary line which exhausts the consumer budget or it means that if consumer has uh, or if you have say m amount of money you're gonna spend all your money and buy things if you are on green line if you are on budget line all right and how much quantity you're gonna buy say money divided by price of x that is the quantity of x and money divided by price of y that will give you the quantity of y okay and as you can see slope of of this line is simply uh, minus px or py okay so there's a few, few basic terms the budget set set of goods consumer is afford to purchase and budget line simply a boundary line which uh, which consists of goods that adjust consumers budget now uh, what if uh, your boss says that okay i'm gonna give you a hike so instead of making hundred thousand you're gonna make hundred and fifty thousand so you got more money now so if you get more money how will it impact on on your budget set and budget line so it's simply that uh, if if the increase if there is an increase in available money, uh, then it shifts up the budget line. Now you have more money to spend. Okay. So that was uh, that was a very good discussion on utility and hope you guys have enjoyed thank you for liking and uh, subscribing leap profess channel on youtube and those who have not subscribed please subscribe and uh, if you like this video um, do not forget to give the hands up and have a wonderful day